Hello, my name is David Berry. I work for Exxon Mobil Research and Engineering Company. Uh, today, I'd like to share with you some of the uh, news around the world about industrial uh, prototypes and testbed activities associated with open process automation. So I'll start with a, a slide that sort of shows you where Exxon Mobil is at. As you can see at the arrows across the bottom, we started with our proof of concept back in 2016. We have progressed through prototype activities at one of our research facilities and currently we're working on testbed activities. All of this is directed towards someday being in a field trial. We are going to go ask for permission to do that here in a few months and then uh, we're hoping to have a fully uh, commercially available design and systems available uh, later. Uh, we estimate around the 2025-2026 time frame. As you can see from the pictures, uh, we have a research facility in New Jersey, and we set up a system. We took out a legacy DCS system. We upgraded it with the OPA-based architecture. And you can see the second picture on the right is of our test bed, which is located in the Woodlands, Texas, which is just a few miles north of our headquarters campus here in Houston. As you can see, the vision, our goal is standards-based, open, secure, and inoperable DCS architecture. So I want to tell you a little more about our prototype. So in the proof of concept, we, we were working on the art of the possible. And of course, the next step is, can you run a real process with this uh, system? This is a system built of heterogeneous parts. We picked a pilot facility because of uh, the ease of access, as well as it's our first try at running a real process. We found one that is a uh, hydrocarbon catalyst processing facility. Um, it produces data since it's a research facility. But you can see we actually had hydrocarbons, uh, hydrogen, crude oil. We did run it at temperature and at pressure. The system size was about 130 real IO. And we used our uh, friends at Lockheed Martin and Wood to help us with this activity. The proof of concept and the prototype really was put together so that we could demonstrate live examples of interoperability, interchangeability, configuration portability, and application portability. And so when we were done, we effectively reached a what we call a TRL-4 level, and we were ready to move to the prototype with a TRL-6. And um, this comes from the NASA TRL levels of readiness. And you can see from the pictures, we used a number of vendors products. So this is a mixed heterogeneous world. The middle picture in the bottom is actually our whole control cabinet, 34 inch by 34 inch Rital cabinet. And the picture to the bottom right is actually the process. It stands about 12 feet tall and is probably 15 feet long and eight feet wide. It is truly a pilot facility. We ran it for approximately 12 weeks. Sadly, uh, COVID impacted the schedule of our operator and uh, we had to shut down a little early. We thought we would get to about four months operation, but we did have three months successful operation and we did uh, demonstrate that this OPA architecture could actually operate this facility as well as the legacy uh, DCS system we migrated from. So moving to today. So that uh, ended in about April of 2020, as we all know what was going on then. So we started working on a test bed facility, which is the next step past the prototype. And we started working with our friends at Yokogawa. Uh, we selected them to be the system integrator for the test bed. You can see from the pictures, we started with a facility and had to build our lab room. And as you follow the arrows, you can see it going from uh, warehouse to lab room to equipment installed to actually people working in it. And uh, as I said before, it's really close to our campus facility, which is uh, nice and convenient. We get a lot of chance to go over there and run our experiments. So we have been actually running our experiments since probably about February of 2020. And uh, we are still running them, getting ready for our field trial activity. As you can see, it's a, a bunch of racks that are uh, put together with the various components from various suppliers. The focus of OPA it really is to be able to create a system out of heterogeneous parts. We use the test bed to demonstrate the capabilities of the parts, qualify the vendors and their components for usage in the field trial at some point, and then sort of work out our design and our architecture 
details and questions we may have. Again, the test bed's goal is to get us ready for field trials. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to one of my teammates, Mohan, and he'll tell you some more. So my name is Mohan Kalyan-Raman. I work in ExxonMobil Research and Engineering. And I am uh, I'm part of the business working group of the Open Process Automation Forum. I co-chair the Marketing and Outreach Subcommittee. I'm going to be talking about the demonstration systems and prototyping activities from OPA Forum end users members. So as end users, we firmly believe that open process control systems based on open uh, architecture uh, and defined standards will, will allow us to use the best in class components. It will simplify integration problems and make it easier to insert new technology and drive innovation in the system, deploy control at the right level and have complete transparency to data and, and fully complete the picture on digital transformation. So the uh, implementation of a uh, standard has to be tested out always in a real system. And in order to accelerate the adoption of the OPAS standard, end user companies are actually taking the lead in taking the available components and assembling them into real systems to test against the standard. So in 2019, ExxonMobil and a group of end user companies joined together to test and to accelerate the development of OPAS-based systems. So we have a total of nine collaboration partner companies, and you can see the list here, which includes Aramco, BASF, ConocoPhillips, Dow, of course, ExxonMobil, Georgia Pacific, Lindy, Reliance, and Shell. So the companies will, join, will uh, actually uh, will start their own testbed activities they will share non-competitive learnings from the testbed systems. The collaboration partner companies plan to develop and conduct testbed experiments. Each partner will select their own system integrator and evaluate the uh, according to their latest OPAS standards. And in addition, the companies plan to progress to parallel field trials to test out real systems and actual operations. So in this slide uh, re really shows you the various announced and demonstrated testbed systems put together both by the ExxonMobil collaboration partners and other end user companies. So in, in the top left panel, you'll see the demonstrator shown by BASF, and they call it the Open OPAS demonstrator. They showed it off at the Namur General Assembly in 2019. So the system really consisted of uh, pumps, tanks, and they used water as a medium. They showed the pumping action, controlling to set point for heating and cooling, as well as uh, level control. It used the distribute, uh, distributed control node, uh, DCN from Phoenix Contact. It used the advanced computing platform from Wind River Titanium and software from ABB. The communication was done using OPC UA, the interoperability of heterogeneous components um, it w w was shown and illustrated principles of uh, open process architecture, open process automation, um, information models using MTP, and principles of no more open architecture. In the middle and in the top middle, you see the uh, announced system by Georgia Pacific. Georgia Pacific is building a demo display board. The unit is meant to be skid mounted and portable and it will use Siemens as a systems integrator. The gateway is provided by, by Rockwell, and DCNs from various other vendors will be used. They plan to take this uh, unit to various operation locations, and use it for awareness and training of open process architecture. On the top right, you see the uh, announcement uh, of a test bed facility in Dakhan by Aramco. They're you're planning to use Schneider Electric as a systems integrator. This uh, test facility will be used to validate technology based on OPAS. It will serve as a place for collaboration partners to conduct experiments. And they also plan to use this to, um, to interact and collaborate with leading academic institutions. Ultimately, Aramco plans to use this facility 
to test and prepare for a field trial deployment of an open process system. In the bottom left, you see um, the announcement by Petronas. They have announced a test facility to build OPA capabilities in Malaysia, and they plan to uh, de de demonstrate OPA and uh, OPA capabilities uh, in in into their facilities and prepare for a free trial. In in the bottom uh, middle, you see the uh, proof of concept that was talked about. So ExxonMobil had talked about it before. Uh, this was using uh, Lockheed Martin as a systems integrator uh, to show the various quality attributes by using heterogeneous components from various suppliers, the quality attributes of interoperability, interchangeability, configuration portability, and application portability. In the bottom right, you see the um, work done by Dow Chemicals. Dow has worked as part of the MXP initiative with ADI and University of Michigan. And their intent in this was to actually show the plug and play interoperability across various vendor components. They also demonstrate the OPA computing framework and deployment of open automation and digital twin functionality. So the, the takeaway really is that the operating companies are investing in and proving out open architecture systems built to the OPAS standard. So the idea behind this is really to accelerate development, to learn from each other, and to conduct field trials and drive the open process uh, automation towards commercialization. So finally, let me conclude with a call to action. So there is a growing movement towards open automation led by end users and leading system integrators, leading hardware suppliers and software suppliers. So you can learn more about the Open Process Automation Forum at the website shown, or just Google Open Process Automation Forum. You can also download the version 2.1 of the standard that was just published in May and at the Open Group website. Um, our call to you is to join the growing movement of 100 plus companies um, that are all moving to open process um, automation we want you to add your voice, be an early mover, and reap the benefits of open architecture. Whether you're a hardware supplier, a software supplier, a system integrator, or an end user, there is a growing marketplace waiting to be tapped and value available for the taking. So join us on this undertaking. Thank you.